Okay, we shall begin with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for your presence to be with us as we look again at the chronology of this Earth's history, and uh, we pray that we can uh, glorify you and honour and praise you for the information that you've been so willing to bestow upon us. And um, we pray that this here light can be used um, to help shape our character, to reflect Christ, and to reveal to others just the wonderful God that is in control of the nations of this here earth and over all things, over our lives. And uh, we see a God of order and uh, a God who has uh, put structures within history. And, um, and we ask that uh, you bless those who are watching this evening and those who will watch the video thereafter. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last week, or not last week, two weeks ago, uh, we covered the history from um, the divided kingdom uh, from that, that sort of uh, and at that point, so we picked it up really from after the destruction of Jerusalem in, uh, in uh, 586. So just from, from after that there, then we proceeded through the, the period of the Babylonian captivity and into the decrees. And we ended around a 408 mm -hmm. BC. And now the next sort of time we have really that's brought to view in the Bible is uh, really we find in Daniel 11, and we, we see Alexander the Great uh, coming in. We could also maybe tie us in with uh, the beasts in Daniel 7 and uh, the image of Daniel 2. So I could, you could even tie them in uh, to this year date as well. So I put uh, 336 BC uh, for a mighty king shall stand up. Now the chart, the chart has um, for Alexander what 332. Yes, but that would when be when he um, conquers Medo Persia. Oh, okay. So that's the conquering of Medo Persia itself. But he stands up before then is what you're going to say when he ascends to the throne? Yes. Okay. So that would be reasonable to put it in 336. Yeah. Though um, from a biblical perspective, um, Uriah Smith might argue that it's when uh, they come into history when they have the contact with uh, Israel. Right, okay, yes. So, so I mean, so, but... But I understand what you're saying, so. Um. Yes. And I could maybe add in here when, um, I haven't really noted the, the end of uh, the Middle Persian Empire this yeah. year. So I could maybe add some more information there. Yeah, okay. And uh, I have then, when Alexander dies, uh, we have in Daniel 11 verses 4 and 5, the, the four winds being mentioned, that he, he should be, he'll not go to his prosperity, he shall be cut off. You know what, I can't remember exactly, but mm -hmm. so he dies in, in 323, and then it's divided into four areas uh, by 301 BC. Mm -hmm. Now, now, you could put a lot of detail in here, um, 
that I, I'm not sure. How, are you going to go through everything in Daniel 11? I guess basically you're going through the verses of Daniel 11, right? Not every verse, but most of it. Yes, I, I'm just I'm not making it too much detailed. It was quite yeah. brief. Yeah, because it could be more detailed than that. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just saying it could mm -hmm. be. Done. Yes. Okay. And, um, okay, so uh, then verses 6 to 9 basically covers from 252 to 246. There's a peace agreement after the First and Second Syrian Wars between Seleucid and Ptolemaic kingdoms. And uh, there's a marriage involved there. And I think it's uh, Queen Laodicea. No, it's not. It's Queen Laodicea is the one that's... Uh, upset about it. Um, she's divorced, doesn't she? And then it's another queen. Uh, it begins with B. <laughs> I can't remember her name. What's her name? Uh, is it B? Um, begins with B. Is it? Um, yeah. Bernice? 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 Yeah. yeah, Bernice, Bernice, Bernice. Yes. I think Bernice. it's Bernice. Yeah. <clears throat> and then that... Uh, yeah. Ends after those involved in the marriage were executed. So that's Bernice and her son. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Ptolemy the third, Eugetes, is that? I don't know how to pronounce that. Assumes the throne of Egypt and makes conquests. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the brother, I think, of Bernice. So just a super um, brief history, not going into any detail. And then we get to 219 to 217 is the Fourth Syrian War and the Battle of Raphia. That's his verses 10 to 12. And then um, 13 to 15, we have the Fifth Syrian War and this is the Battle of Panium. And uh, Rome intervenes in this year history. So I uh, have there a Wikipedia quote as a sub or like a footnote. So in 200 BC, they say, uh, Roman um, emissaries came to Philip Antiochus, sorry, and Antiochus, uh, demanding that they refrain from invading Egypt. The Romans would suffer no disruption of the import of grain from Egypt, key to supporting the massive population in Italy. As neither monarch had planned to invade Egypt itself, they willingly complied to Rome's demands. And that's, uh, we find that in verse 14. It says about uh, the robbers of thy people shall stand up to establish the vision. And then Daniel 11, 23, we have the league made between uh, the Rome and the Jews. I have quite a bit of information there about what the actual decree is. And uh, Hank, do I make note? I make note here of 161 and 158. So William Miller identified as referenced on the 1843 chart when the league impacted events in 158 BC, while Uriah Smith identified the year when the ambassadors from Judea went to Rome to make the accord. Okay. And so the, I just have there sort of the history of that, what's going on. Um, I don't really need to, to go into all that, uh, just what the degree is, the sort of decree of the Senate concerning the League of assistance and friendship between the nation of the Jews. It mm -hmm. shall not be lawful for any that are subject to the Romans to make war with the nation of the Jews, nor assist those that do so, either by sending them corn, ships, or money. And if the attack be made upon the Jews, the Romans shall assist them as far as they are able. And again, if any attack be made upon the Romans, the Jews shall assist them. So that's basically what was the uh, the agreement and then I have uh, we can work out roughly when Anna married from Luke 2 verses uh, verse 36 
So she would have been married in, in 95 BC. And then uh, she becomes a widow seven years later. So what would have been 88 BC. And then she ministers in the, in the temple then from that to her time until uh, Christ is uh, dedicated. Then uh, you see that the, it mentions dates there or for ages, her age then. What would have been at that their time? So she says she's a great little old lady. So we don't know exactly how old she is, but uh, she'd be in her hundreds anyway. And then um, <clears throat> we have Daniel 11, verse 16. So this is uh, Rome taking the, the pleasant land. Or sorry, um, the glorious land. Okay, so just a question here. I want to get back to this Anna because I never looked at this. So she lives to be. She was a widow for eighty-four years. Yes. And she had been married for seven. Yes. Well, that's a pretty interesting group of numbers. Yes. Now, um, now, how are you getting her exact age then? Well, we don't have an exact, but we can say roughly, say if she married when she was okay, uh, 16 maybe, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. So we don't know her age, but we know how long she was a widow and how long she was married. Yes. And so we can do the math there. Now you have, um, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so maybe I'm not understanding. So if she's 84, that's saying when Jesus was born. So you're just adding four years onto that to get 88 BC. Um, yes. To go to just, when she yes. became a widow. And then, that's okay. Correct. Okay, so I'm just understanding it. Um, that's it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 you know just one of those little details that you know. Uh, why I am asked why yeah. uh, I am I say hi to all of you and the door, and I am asked what girl name you are steady on okay well this this study is just on the stevens paper on uh, chronology but here he just had this reference to anna the prophetess when jesus was um at the temple so this is when joseph and mary brought in jesus for his i believe right Yes, that's that's the idea. And there's there's Simeon and Anna. These are two people that are mentioned. And with Anna, it gives how long she was a widow and how long she was married. So altogether, it's 91 years. Um, and so she would have been older than that, obviously quite a bit older. Um, but she had been a widow for 84 years and married for seven. So. It's kind of a remarkable detail. It's also interesting because Anna was descendant, it says here, of the tribe of Asher. Yeah. And Asher was the eighth son, the youngest of the four sons of the handmaids. Mm -hmm. So I just, it, it's intrigued me that the number eight plays into this thing even, even further. And also 88 BC. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that symbol there. So she becomes a widow in 88 BC after seven years of marriage. And it's um, quite unusual to have uh, someone identified from the tribe of Asher mm -hmm. at this year time of history, because normally 
after 723, or maybe you have, yeah, after that their time, mm -hmm. basically the northern tribes are scattered and you only really hear about the people from Judah or Levi or Benjamin. Yeah. You have another one of, one of the tribes being mentioned as, as a, sort of like a, a, rarity, a rarity. Yeah. Because there would be these odd people that survived from these tribes, but not many. So. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing is in the name, Anna in the Hebrew, according to Strong's, would have been meaning favored. But she was the daughter of Phanuel, and his name meant the face of God. Um, I ask, I ask a big quake, I, I ask very quick, go back on the mute. How to spell her name? A N N A. Thank you. Okay, okay Stephen. Okay. So her name's an uh, a mirror image, like a chiasm in her name as well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in English, uh, it is also the same name as Hannah, which is also. All right. Great. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> um, so uh, this is uh, Daniel eleven sixteen. We know that um, Pompey he first took Syria, so we could, I can maybe add in there Daniel eight verse nine, where it talks about he shall enter into the the east, the pleasant land in the south. So, but I have 65 BC there, so it's kind of um, merging them. So we have, uh, and some some dates put in 64 BC for the uh, entering into the glorious land rather than 63. So I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, I think it's 63. That's, I've done a bit of research on that. It's 63. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and then, it, it depends how you look at what's happening there, but mm -hmm. you're going to have the siege of Jerusalem in 63, I believe. Right. Mixed up. Uh, no, I might be getting mixed up. Uh, I've done that before. Because there was two sieges. What are these? Yeah, 63 BC. So that's going to happen at that time. So, yeah. Okay, so verses uh, 17 to 19 is dealing with Julius Caesar. So it just mentions there he's seeking dictatorship and his liaisons, liaisons with Cleopatra, and then he's killed. Um, after returning to Rome, so that's our period. And then uh, 31 BC, we have this year, Daniel 11, verse 24 to 29. So it's talking about the Battle of Actium. Mm -hmm. And we have a 360 years um, being a time here. Rome shall rule from her strongholds there for a time. And that takes us to uh, 330 AD. And that's the moving of the capital from Rome to Constantinople by Constantine. Mm -hmm. And then 27 BC, we have Augustus Caesar become emperor. And that's one who raises taxes. And so Daniel 11 verse 20 talks us about that. And then 19 BC, we can work out the temple construction beginning by Herod the Great. We have... Christ in, in 28 AD saying, uh, the Jews saying to him about 46 years, has this temple um, being building and you've been, you're gonna raise it up in three days. So you can work out uh, 46 years from uh, 28 
AD will take us back to 19 BC. Mm. And then we have the birth of the man healed at the gate beautiful and another man becomes a cripple who is later healed by Christ. So I am putting them at 10 BC. Uh, that was a man who was a cripple for 38 years. Okay. So what I, I've sort of placed him in a certain, I think it was like 30 something. I, I have to say maybe 29 or 28. I have to, we'll, we'll, go, we'll come to that uh, date where we count that from. Okay. And then the um, right BC, we have the angel Gabriel appears as Zacharias and Elizabeth conceives. And then 4 BC, the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and Mary conceives. Now that could possibly be very late in 5 BC. Says, uh, we're not too sure because we know Christ is born around the autumn. Yeah, he was born, well, probably uh, the end of September in 4 BC. So that's going to put it, you know, nine months. So around... Uh, you know, around Christmas time or something that he was conceived. Yeah, so it could be 5 BC or early 4 BC. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mary abides with Elizabeth three months, and Caesar issues a tax decree, and John the Baptist is born, and Jesus, and uh, Jesus is then dedicated to the temp in the temple. Mm -hmm. There is a point that um, when you're when you're going through this about Mary abiding with Elizabeth for three months. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I was looking at this week in study was that Elizabeth and Zacharias very likely lived in Hebron. Oh, and Hebron being the city that had been of Anak of the city of the giants. Mm hmm. And I give, uh, no, I give, I, I did heard of Stephen saying, what well, Jesus, you ought. He is one, nine, eight. Okay, thanks, Mark. Okay, so I have uh, 3 BC then the wise men uh, from the east visit Christ. So if Christ is then uh, born in sort of like the autumn, September 4 BC, they're going to see the star. That's going to take them a, a time to to see what. They're, they're going to go to their history books and so forth and see the meaning of this year and try to um, find out be convicted by the Holy Spirit and then it's going to take them maybe several months then to uh, to travel from the east to Jerusalem so it's going to be sort of early probably um, in 3 BC then at the wise men visit Jesus mm -hmm. and then Mary and Joseph that are going to flee to Egypt and then Herod's going to kill the young children of Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And then he dies in 1 BC. Uh, I have looked into the history of that there. I think, um, I think it's Josephus. It's about Herod dying soon after an eclipse. Mm -hmm. And um, a, lunar, a lunar eclipse. Okay, yeah, so lunar eclipse. And some people place that to the lunar eclipses in 4 BC, which wouldn't work chronology wise. Yeah. Um, but there's one in 1 BC that's, uh, to me, it has a lot more yeah. credibility. Yeah. And it just would yeah. fit the timeline. There's actually four different eclipses that could work. So between 4 BC and 1 BC. Um, but I think the one BC makes the one makes the most sense. Now, generally, what happens is that people assume that that um, Jesus is born um, 
like and and this eclipse happens all kind of at the same time we just kind of group it together but it's actually spread over a bit a few years um so generally the 1 bc date is held by those who have the crucifixion in 33 a.d and the 4 bc date is held by those who have the crucifixion in 30 a.d right so there's these two basic groups but both of them always assume that this is all happening in rapid succession instead of over a period of a few years. So. Okay, so I have there, then uh, Joseph then returns to Nazareth with his family. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in 10 AD, uh, Jesus attends the Passover, has lost three days to Mary and Joseph. So he okay. would be like 12 and a half about their time. Okay. Now, I'd always put him in, in 9 AD. Um, well, he would be, at the Passover, he would be 11. Would he not? Um, let me do some math here. I know it's, so if he's in 4 BC, 4. He's going to turn twelve now in nine nine eighty. So, so if he's born in he's born in four BC, and then you go you add ten. So if you added ten, you'd have fourteen, and then you subtract one, that'd be thirteen. But you're saying yeah because we're going halfway through the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, so I'm just going to do this here. So 4 BC. Plus 12. Yeah, well, I'm doing this in the, the calendar converter thing. So we're going to have him born around the time of of Tabernacles. Oh, uh, two. So uh, two, two. Okay, thanks, Mark. And then, and then we're going to go to 10. And that's going to be in uh, the spring, so the Passover. So that's going to be a period of um, 4,578 days if I go from the Feast of Tabernacles beginning to uh, the 15th of Nisan for, the, for that period of time. And yeah, so he would have been 12 years and a half, basically, right? Yes. That's what you're saying. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, 12 AD, then a woman becomes bowed down with the spirit of infirmity. <clears throat> yeah. She's going to. Be like that for 18 years so it's going to be like 30 in ad when the jesus heals her yeah 14 ad is uh caesar augustus dies and then tiberius becomes emperor so that relates to daniel 11 verses 21 to 22 and there's some issue there isn't there with the the 14th is it the 15th year then Caesar Augustus, or 15th year of Tiberius, is when John the Baptist then uh, becomes first baptizing. And so if you add 15 to that there, that would take you to uh, 29 AD. But it's the 15th year, so you can maybe say, ask about that. So would then take you to, if you're going to have like a, an inclusive count, that would take you. Well, 20, well, yeah, 28. So there's so there's a number of things here. So one is um, there are different ways of counting both the years and the reigns of kings. Uh, there's the official Roman way of counting. And a lot of people just assume that this is the official Roman way of counting, which is not a very good assumption because we find lots of indications that people, uh, that the common person, 
didn't really care what the Roman government said about counting things. That is, we kind of live in a world where everything is standardized. They lived in a world where things weren't standardized. And so in a colloquial sense, they one would do inclusively, but also they would count the year, the beginning of the year's reign at a different time of year. So, so there's, so there's a few different problems that exist and it, it's pretty complicated and, and I haven't written a paper on it yet. I've read a lot on it. Um, and I've read a lot, lots of papers where people show the different arguments, but at some point I'll be able to write a paper on this that will explain the 15th year of Tiberius, but definitely it's not the official Roman year that's being referenced here. Because if you did it that way, you would have to put Jesus' crucifixion in uh, 33 AD. Mm -hmm. Yes. 35. So, he did die. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Okay, Stephen, go ahead. Okay, so... 1780, I've put in here, there's the, the woman that has an issue of blood. You know, you know what? She had that for 12 years. And then Jairus's daughter was 12 years old as well when uh, Jesus raised her from the dead. So them two things happened from, uh, based upon that 1780 date. And then 2780, we have then uh, John beginning to baptize and then the 70th week begins as well. Jesus is baptized fast for 40 days, is tempted by Satan. And then uh, he begins to attend to gather his disciples and then you have the, the wedding in Cana also about their time. We get that from Desire of Ages 145.1 mentions that during the time of the wedding uh, Mary had been separated from Jesus for two months due to the, the 40 days of fasting. So it would still be uh, in that year, that uh, wedding. And then in 2880, uh, we can place the cleansing of the temple for the first time. And then meets with uh, Nicodemus. And then the woman at Jacob's well in Sychar, and then uh, Christ in Cana, and the healing of the nobleman's son, and he was uh, sick in Capernaum. So, um, yeah, so the son was sick in Capernaum, and then, then Christ doesn't uh, come to heal him, but the nobleman visits Christ in Cana, and then walks back the next day, and he was well, the CMR that Christ said. So it's hard to maybe tie down. This is a wee bit of a guesswork. You know, this is very much um, where I, I think what is happening in 2018. There may be other things, but it's hard to maybe pin them down. I have we more confidence that these things are happening at this time? Um, 2980, I have the healing of the man called Bethesda. So then we count back 38 years to when he uh, became ill or paralyzed. And then Christ is questioned by the Sanhedrin over Sabbath breaking and the popular feeling in Judea against Christ. So I have an Elamite quote here that helps me to place this here in 29 AD. She says, the news swiftly the news spread swiftly that by his own confession, Jesus of Nazareth was not the Messiah. And thus in Galilee, the current of popular feeling was turned against him as the year before it had been in Judea. So this is, um, I'm saying that the year before would have been in 2880 then. I could maybe note then that uh, the year before, I don't think I have it here. That Okay, I have here that Sanhedrin. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. I have to maybe <laughs> look at this again. It's kind of what, what my reasoning is. I may have forgot it. But it says there, alas for Israel, they 
rejected the Saviour because they longed for a conqueror who would give them temporal power. They wanted the meat which perishes and not the meat, not that which endures unto everlasting life. So this quote from the chapter Crisis in Galilee is just before the Passover in 30 AD. It would therefore, it was therefore the previous year when Christ was rejected in Judea. The event that would correlate with that rejection would be the events of John chapter 5, where Christ heals the cripple at the pool of Bethesda. He is called to account by the Sanhedrin and is rejected by them. If it is a year before the Passover of 30 AD, the feast of the Jews of John chapter 5 verse 1 would also relate to the time of the Passover in 29 AD. So that's my thinking there. You have that feast of the Jews in John chapter 5. And then, so you have then the Sanhedrin uh, questioning Christ over Sabbath breaking. And um, you have the popular feeling, uh, what does it say? The popular feeling was turned against him. Um, so the next, the following year in 30 AD, the popular feeling would be turned against him in Galilee, as it was here in 29 AD against him in Judea. So that's uh, what I'm bringing out from that quote. And have John the Baptist then being imprisoned. And then Nazareth rejects Christ, the city. And then uh, Christ appoints 12 disciples for gospel ministry. You have the Sermon on the Mount, uh, a leper, Jairus' daughter, and a woman with the issue of blood are healed. So this is really, I'm just sort of getting a lot of this from the Zara of Ages. <clears throat> and then uh, in 30 AD, I have that Peter confesses Christ as the Son of God. Uh, Christ is transfigured and heals the daughter of a woman uh, from Canaan. So what is the Syrophoenician woman? And then John the, John the Baptist is beheaded in 30 AD. I think that's pretty early on, pretty early on in the year. Um, maybe just before his 33rd birthday. So maybe John, I think, would be 32 years old, not far from becoming 33. And then you have, I think, because I think it was just before the Passover. Uh, and then Jesus feeds the 5,000 and then the 4,000. That year, Christ walks in the Sea of Galilee. And then many turn and walk no more with Christ. So I have here a, a refit note, it's not coming up. Let's see. That footnote is, I think that's because that image is not coming up. So footnote 10 says, this is in relation to the events of John chapter six, occurring one year before the event of Christ's last supper, according to the desire of ages. So page 720, it says, this a year before the betrayal, Christ declared, have I not chosen you 12? He said, I'm one of you as the, de as the devil. So that's we get in a, She's referencing John chapter 6, verse 70. So this is, Christ is saying this here, at the Passover, just before his, uh, at the Last Supper, just before his crucifixion. So she's saying like one year before uh, that we can then place John chapter 6. So that would be in the spring of uh, 30 AD. where many turn and walk no more with Christ. And then uh, Christ attends the Feast of Tabernacles that year. So that will be the 2nd to the 9th of October in 30 AD. And he does not condemn a woman caught in adultery. So this sort of picture here, he writes with his finger, the sins of the Pharisees and those who accused the woman. 
Then we have the healing of the blind man with clay, and then Christ at the Feast of Dedication, also called the Festival of Lights. It was, it's also called Hanukkah, and that was from the 25th of Kislev to the 4th of Tivith. Uh, so that's the 10th to the 18th of December in 30 AD. So that's when Christ was at that dedication. I think we read about that in John chapter 10. Well, that takes us, you were able to place that basically uh, 30 AD near the end of it. So things are, we can then see that basically everything else then after that. And um, from John chapter 10 is going to take place in 31 AD. And we have the ministry in uh, Perea that follows that. And we have uh, an Ellen White quote here. But uh, quite a long one. Maybe not read it at all, but. He says, a considerable part of the closing months of Christ's ministry was spent in Perea, the province on the farther side of the Jordan from Judea. So here the multitude thronged his steps, as in the early ministry in Galilee, and much of his former teaching was repeated. During these last months of his ministry, many of Christ's parables were spoken. The priests and rabbis pursued him with ever-increasing bitterness, and his warnings to them he veiled in symbols. They could not mistake his meaning, yet they could find in his words nothing on which to grind an accusation against him. In the parable of the Pharisee and the publican, the self-sufficient prayer, God, I thank thee that I am not as the rest of men, stood out sharp in contrast to the penitent plea, be merciful to me, a sinner. So basically, this is Luke 18. And then it talks about the parable of the, see, the fig tree. It talks about three years, I think, that one, isn't it? The, and then and then the invitation to the gospel feast. We find that in Luke 14. Um, so that was... Uh, one says, I've married a wife, I cannot come. Um, one says, I've five yoke of oxen, and that type of parable we find there. So that was happening then, that's Luke 14. And then she mentions about ask, and it sh uh, shall be given to you, seek and knock, and so forth, you shall find. So that's in Luke, nine, uh, Luke 11, nine, verse 9. So basically, I think it goes back to um, mention there, look 15. So I think I've, I worked out, it's basically from look nine, uh, sort of like halfway through, uh, right to the end of look. So like the 24, look to chapter 24, so basically from nine to 24 is all happening in 31 AD in the Gospel of Luke. So that's just what I, what was interesting. And there's all the parables, all, all of them are just uh, spoken in this here ministry uh, to, to uh, Judea, or sorry, Perea. Um, and then we have the sending out of the 70. Uh, the children are blessed. Rich wrong ruler, Lazarus raised from the dead. Christ passes through Jericho, heals the blind men. Stays with Zacchaeus, feasts at Simon's house. So that was April 19th and the Sabbath. Uh, the triumphal entry on the 20th, so that's the Sunday, first day of the week. The temple is cleansed again on the 21st. He curses the, the fig tree then on that their day. And then the following day, he goes into the temple again, and um, the fig tree is withered, and then he pronounces curses on the scribes and the Pharisees, so that will be on the 22nd. Then we have the Passover feast on the 26th, 
uh, in the evening, Gethsemane at midnight, betrayal, death, and uh, the trial, death, and then also on the 27th, on the Friday, and then he's resurrected on the 29th, and then the sands 40 days later on the 7th of June. And then we have Matthias, he replaces Judas. The Spirit is poured out on Pentecost on June 17. And then the a lame man healed at the gate beautiful. So these things are all taking place in 31 AD. And then like, we don't have any details, but we just sort of uh, know that between 31 and 34 AD, we have the Acts of the Apostles basically from chapter four to chapter six. We have Barnabas sells lamb, Ananias and Sapphira seek to deceive and perish. Uh, the apostles are imprisoned, released by an angel. Uh, Gamaliel counsels the Sanhedrin as to their designs towards the apostles. Uh, Greek believers complain against the Jews that are being uh, neglected. And then seven deacons are chosen, and then Stephen is uh, stoned. Oh, sorry, he, well, he does uh, wonders and miracles amongst the people. <clears throat> and then, so we have there 34 AD, and then a more, we can place that more specifically in 34 AD when uh, Stephen is accused and uh, stoned to death. And then that's the fulfillment of the 70 week prophecy. And then persecution then becomes widespread against the church. Excuse me. Oh, just. Oh. Or if one of them here sneezes, that you sort of not sure you want to sneeze or not. I'm trying to sneeze that you want not, can't really do it. Um, so, and then just a general 34 AD to 58 AD. We can just place all, uh, from basically Acts chapter 8 to Acts chapter 24. And so we'll not go through all that there. Um, basically, from when Philip ministers in Samaria, baptizes the Ethiopian, <coughs> and then to the conspiracy to kill Paul. And that was discovered, and then he sent to Caesarea. So I can't place any date exactly. I can just sort of give a brief. Uh, time period for the events, uh, for them events taking place. And then I'm going to place these here two years. Uh, there's now my quote. Uh, so when Paul, he's imprisoned in Caesarea and accused by Bertullus before Felix, <coughs> she says, uh, among Paul's assistants at Rome were many of his former companions and fellow workers. Look, the beloved physician who had attended him on the journey to Jerusalem through the two years imprisonment at Caesarea and upon his perilous journey to Rome was with him still. <coughs> so I can place this here, um, shipwreck in 60 AD. So we know that then two years previous to that, then uh, Paul was imprisoned. And uh, uh, this is sort of working back from 63 AD. Uh, we know when Rome burned in 64 AD and that Paul, <coughs> there's our statements we'll come to that enable us to place that, which enables us to place this, this here. Uh, Ellen White talks about this here, sea voyage to Rome was in, in November. She talks about a stormy November, nearly 300 souls, sailors, soldiers, passengers and prisoners stood that stormy November morning upon the shore on the island of Melita. And so we place that in 60 AD. Um, so this is when uh, Festus was replaced by Felix. Uh, Paul was tried by the Jews and Festus. And then Paul appealed, so that would have been prior to Felix taking over. So we should maybe change the order there. Paul appeals to the judgment seat of Caesar. And then Paul testifies before Agrippa and Berenice. Uh, so that was the same person or same name then we were trying to find earlier. Uh, or the, 
two fifty two yeah. time period. Yeah, same name. Different person. Yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so sixty one AD to sixty three AD, Paul's under house arrest in Rome, and uh, he writes the letters to Philemon, Philemon, uh, Ephesus, Colossae, and Philippi, and he has converts in Caesar's household. So he's in from that November sixty AD. He's in Malta then for three months. Uh, I think that is brought out in uh, well, I think it is in Acts. It mentions that he's there for three months. <clears throat> so this is a, a quote that helps establish uh, this year 63 AD date. She says, many months passed after Paul's arrival in Rome before the Jews of Jerusalem appeared in person to present their accusations against the prisoner. They had repeatedly thwarted it. They had been repeatedly thwarted in their designs and now Paul was to be tried before the highest tribunal of the Roman Empire. They had no desire to risk another, another defeat. Laius, Felix, Festus and Agrippa had all declared their belief in his innocence. His enemies could hope for success only in seeking by intrigue to influence the emperor in their favor. Delay would further their object as it would afford them time to perfect and execute their plans. And so they waited for a while before preferring their charges in person against the apostle. In the providence of God, this delay resulted in the furtherance of the gospel. Through the favour of those who had Paul in charge, he was permitted to dwell in a commodious house. He could meet freely with his friends and also present the truth daily to those who came, came to hear. Thus, for two years, he continued his labours, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, all conf with, sorry, I should be probably with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So, you know, um, doesn't really establish 63 AD, but this here I think does. So, uh, Nero declared the prisoner guiltless in 63 AD. Paul's bonds was removed, and he again was a free man. She, uh, she says, had his tr trial been longer deferred, or had he, from any cause, been detained in Rome until the following year, he would doubtless have perished in the persecution which then took place. So in July 18, then in 64 AD, we know there was a, a fire that destroys two thirds of Rome. And uh, Nero blames Christians and persecution begins on the Nero. So going with that their statement then, we see that she, she mentions there how his trial uh, been detained until the following year. So we can then place that in 63 AD. Can, then, can we make any application of this? Well, the July 18 date, we know that uh, Odilu has made, uh, Presentations concerning mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, there could be, I haven't really, I haven't really seen anything. Well, 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 the thing I'm thinking about here with Paul is his journey to Rome and Acts chapter 27, and, and mm -hmm. that's all part of this story. And yes. So maybe there's a way to put this on a line in some way. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, it's just, you know, just some of these symbols are here. But yeah, um, I understand what Odilio does, which, you know, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Here we, we have some other symbols. So there's not, another quote from Acts Apostles. She says, the unbelieving Jews conceived the idea of fastening upon Paul the crime of instigating the burning of Rome. Not one of them thought for a moment that he was guilty. 
but they knew that such a charge made with the faintest show of plausibility would seal his doom. Through their efforts, Paul was again arrested and hurried away to his final imprisonment. Mm. So we're not sure when exactly, if it was that same year, that Paul was uh, returned to Rome and, ex and executed, imprisoned and so forth. So it could be 65 AD that happened. Um, not sure, don't really have anything for sure. But it's going to be before the siege of, of Cestius in 66. I would understand that, yes. Yeah. It's interesting, Paul, Paul, by his death, avoids the siege of Jerusalem and all that history. <laughs> yes. So another thing, I just missed out there, that a man begins to declare the woes that are to come upon Jerusalem. Okay. So that's when the same year then that... Uh, Paul is tried and set free. Mm -hmm. Then we have Cestius. This is in the Feast of Tabernacles time period. He mm -hmm. plants a standard outside the walls of Jerusalem and the Christians flee to Pella. <clears throat> and then in 70 AD, Titus destroys Jerusalem and the temple. And his siege starts around Passover time. Yes. So we got the... Those two dates tied together as we did um, with the birth of Christ. Yeah, so we have and, like a week. And yeah, and his baptism, or not his baptism. Mm -hmm. but his, uh, well, I guess we had it there attached to, uh, you know, to his death. Um, I guess it depends how, um, there's two things. I guess what we have is we have the birth of Christ with his coming to the temple when he's 12, right? And then we're going to have his Passover, uh, his death and baptism attached together in that sort of pattern and the destruction of Jerusalem or the two sieges of Jerusalem tied together in that pattern. They're both going to be uh, tying the spring and the fall together. Yes. So that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> okay, so... We're at 70 AD. The rest is basically some diagrams, a few other observations, time structures, and so forth. And um, this one we I think we covered previously. Um, from 1533 BC um, to 977 BC is a period of nine, 556 years. So this is when. Uh, we have the setting up of the golden calf by Aaron, and then we have the setting up of the golden calves by Jeroboam. And between that time period, we have the kings of Judah, and then the kings of Judah end in 586 BC. And you have there, there on the 10th day of the fifth month, the burning of the temple. And then it's 655 years, which is like a, a reverse of the 556. Uh, sort of inverted, uh, that will take us to 70 AD, and it's also on the 10th day of the fifth month. And here we have like false worship and uh, two golden calves being built, and then we have tree worship destroyed and the, the temple of destructions. And then um, 70 AD completes the 666 year time period from the siege of Jerusalem and the reign of Jehoiachin in um, 597. You have then 36 years until he's uh, then released from prison. And then that sort of parallels the 36 years from the stoning of Stephen uh, in 34 AD. So, and we know that 36 um, added up all the numbers up to 36 added up comes to 666. So I have more to say about that structure, sort of some other things I've observed to add into that, uh, that I don't, we haven't seen before. So this is just the, the 70 week prophecy. This is nothing, uh, this is like standard Adventism, understanding, nothing new here, just I'm just sort of adding this here to the, the diagram just for anyone who wasn't aware mm -hmm. of it yeah. to look at it. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I've added uh, what we came to know, understand, and um, came to, to light in, in 70, uh, sorry, in the 25th of December last year, mm -hmm. that we recognized that there's 777 years um, from the two Lamics. Um, take us to the time of Constantine. So we have the, the 70, the 490 years of the 70 weeks. And we, we have the 490 uh, illustrated or typified maybe in the Genesis chapter four, verse 24, you have Lamech uh, said there, if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech 77 fold. And then if we take these here, 34 years, sorry, 434 years, and add them to the 49 years multiplied by seven years, which gives us 343, we get the number 777. That ties in with the other Lamech in Genesis 5, verse 31. And all the days of Lamech shall be 777 years, and he died. And so if we apply the 777 years to the beginning of the 490, that will take us to the, the Sunday law of Constantine in 321 AD. Uh, Ellen White quote, uh, concerning this year, she says, the first public measure enforcing Sunday observance was the law enacted by Constantine in AD 321. This edict required the townspeople to rest on the venerable day of the sun but permitted countrymen to continue their agricultural pursuits. Though virtually a heathen statute, it was enforced by the emperor after his nominal acceptance of Christianity. So it's also interesting that uh, we notice this after uh, this year, 777 years, after a 777 day uh, period as well. So, and then we have Colin also with his study that day that I proposed that Trump would be the eighth of the kings of Revelation 17. I know that not all are in agreement that it will be Trump, but that was the study that he did on that day anyway. And then just the, what I came up with then today, I noticed that uh, if you take these here 70 weeks and the, the three time periods that are given, in Daniel chapter nine, we have 49 years, uh, which is seven weeks, 62 weeks, which is 483, and then the 70 weeks being 490 years. And if we add them all up, we have the number 1022, and then, from uh, 457 BC, uh, the 2300 years also begin then, and they end on the 10th day, sorry, the 10th month, sorry, 22nd of October, 1844, which is uh, the 10th month and the 22nd day. So it ties in, if you're adding these here up there, you have the symbol of October 22nd. Now we also have, um the 100 and 1022 years back from 457 BC to the, the end of the allotment of the land in 1479 BC. And are, are these then related? I mean, obviously they, they have some relationship. But, mm -hmm. um, how is that interesting? Yeah, so we have that 10, same 1022, so. Yeah, I forgot about that. I hadn't really, to, I could maybe sort of see, look into that. Yeah. So, so it makes, four, makes 457 then a cinder of a chiasm. So that would be 2000 and. Well, it's a type of chiasm. So it's one's not a span of time, right? This one's so you got the twenty three hundred, and then you have 
10, 22 going back. So that's mm -hmm. going to be 33, 22 years. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because you just simply okay. add the 2300 to that. And so the 33, 22 um, is. Um, The only significant number that I see there is it's uh, 22 times 151. So 151, right. the, the way of counting the, the shekels, and uh, 22 is the number of restoration. Right, okay, yeah. <clears throat> so I had um, done a study on the Gematria of Genesis 1 1. I just uh, noticed some observations. Well, somebody else had actually, I'm just sort of, uh, someone else had done these here observations. And I um, just sort of included them in, a, in this here. So the, the Jumadra of uh, the Hebrew calendar, or sorry, Hebrew, <laughs> Hebrew um, alphabet. Okay, so the, the, these here words, uh, there's one to nine of these here words, or sorry, letters in the Hebrew uh, alphabet. Mm -hmm. And then it goes, uh, these here are signed uh, 10 to 90, and then these uh, four letters are 100 to 400. That's how it works out. And then you have here Genesis 1 verse 1, um, the, uh, the numbers assigned to each letter, and if you add up all these here numbers it comes to 2701. Um, seven, 37 and 73 uh, is the only way to produce a numerical value by multiplication besides 2701 and 1 being multiplied. So uh, uh, these numbers together form a mirror. If you put, put them together, 3773. Uh, so 73 is the 37th odd number. And then, um, and then 2701 is the 70th, 73rd triangular number. Sorry, I don't know if that's correct. No, 73 is, is uh, <laughs> hold on. Yeah. All right. The thirty-seven. Sorry, right. The seventy. The seventy-third triangular number. I think there's maybe something wrong there. I don't think that's correct. I have to fix it. So the seventy-third triangular number. Um, yeah, I think that's correct. The seventy-third triangular number and the thirty-seventh hexagonal number. All right. Okay. Maybe that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, yes. Um, so every hexagonal number is a triangular number. Yep. Um, but, um, but, but after one, only every other triangular number. I don't know, I'm getting confused. So 37 is the 12th prime number, and 73 is the 21st prime number. Mm -hmm. So these numbers together can form a mirror. You get 12, 21. Plus so 12, 12, 12 times 21 is? Uh, 252. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, so you get 252 out of that. Yeah. <clears throat> then, um, 
12 cubed is 144 and 21 cubed is 441. So these numbers form a mirror as well, if we put together. And then 2701 mirrored is 1072. And uh, so if you add both of them numbers, it's 3773. And then the actual words, um, Gematra of, of the first word there is 86. So the 86th prime number is 443 and so forth. Uh, created is 203 in the Gematria. And then so the, the 203rd uh, prime number is 1237 and so forth. So if you add up all them numbers here, it comes to 19013, which is the 2161st prime number. And then if you mirror that, it's 1612. So one, add them both together, it's 3773. So you have that, you just mm -hmm. combine the back. To the, so anyway, oh, after all that, yeah. <laughs> just uh, establishing this year, 3773. So yeah. from 4 BC, we've uh, 37 years to the close of repression for ancient Israel. And then it's uh, 73 years then to the destruction of Jerusalem. And we've noted that 36 year time period. It's connected to the six and six. Mm -hmm. And then we connect that to the 666 years. Mm -hmm. So this is at uh, 37 years and the 36 years here and 73 years. Now we have 666 years that take us back to the siege of um, Jerusalem during Jehoiachin's reign. And it's going to be 36 years then before he's released. And he's in prison. Uh, it's in, mentions it's the 37th year when he's released. So even though, so that would be like a, an ordinal count, and the 36 years is a, is a cardinal count. So we have that 37 and 36 year, as we have that 37 and 36 year as well. The end of the 666 years, and um, 666 years is six plus six plus six times 37 as well. And then I've noted, um, so that's basically 18 times 37. I'm just sort of emphasizing that 666 and the 37. And then you can recognize that it's the 25th day of the 12th month when he's released. And now we know that Christ wasn't born on the 25th day of December, but just I'm just noting it's a traditional date there. So it's just, uh, just uh, we can, I'm just adding a part of the, the structure anyway, just uh, as a symbol. A symbol, yes. Mm -hmm. back then. So uh, that's that study. Mm -hmm. That's that paper. Okay. So rather than moving on, should we just end it early? I mean, we yeah, probably, that. probably. Now, does anybody have any observations? I've got a couple of observations I'll send along here in a little bit. Okay. Well, 1022, um, what was, uh, what events did that go, did those go between? So the 1022 years from 457 back to the dividing of the land in 17, okay, that's right. yeah, in 1479 BC. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. Thanks. 14 years after they crossed the Jordan, yeah. And, and that was part of our structure. We were dealing with the sabbatical cycles. Right, right. Like it came up in the discussion last night, you know, when we were looking at the uh, the prophetic mirror in comparison with uh, Colin's prediction that oh, there was, now you're down here. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was referring back to um, uh, these, uh, these structures, the sabbatical Jubilee structures 
where Stephen had noted the symbols dealing with midnight, midnight cry, etc. Um, now, I don't seem to have, like you had made a chart. Did you, Stephen, with all those marked in there? Uh, I just, uh, I just want to go back to this here. I can't remember. I guess I have to look at all the screenshots. <laughs> uh, here it is, the WhatsApp things. Um, okay, yeah, this was this. Uh, I just wanted to look at this. Just um, this is kind of not exactly what you were addressing, but it just came up in my mind. So when we looked at at this structure, this diagram that you had drawn, um, we have this uh, 1022 years here to the beginning of the 2300 days. That's where I'd seen it before, right? So you'd put it in here. <clears throat> so we have basically a symbol, Abraham leaving Haran, and that 16-2 that relates to Snow's February 16th letter, 162 years. And then the three days is the 30 years, the 25 days is the 250 years. And then this span of time. So so this is something that I, you know you do quite a bit of. You take spans of times and turn them into dates, either years or sometimes uh, specific dates. Um, so that's kind of what we have here with this uh, 1022 again. It's it's a span of time connected to a date. But here it's on two different lines then instead of uh, the seven, the, uh, instead of this one here, it, it's still giving us this same symbol. Here we don't have a span of time but we're adding up these three different spans to give us the 1022. And so, so these two need to go together in some way. Does that make sense, Stephen? Because yes. you have the one going to the start of the 2300 years, and then this one giving you this ending of the 2300 years. Mm -hmm. Right, because you don't have them together in one chart yet. No. Yeah. So, and so Dwight had some observations. He's, we don't see his. Uh... I said I'd send them along in a bit. Okay. How long is a bit? Give me about five minutes. Just... <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so um, now when it comes to the, the chronology of, so there's some chronology we've dealt with that is a bit, I've spent time uh, discussing this with different uh, people. Um, the whole chronology dealing with um, Tiberius in particular. So you had, you had dealt with Tiberius, the 15th year of Tiberius, and how it's generally looked upon. And uh, so the, there's sort of these, these inconsistencies, I guess, that people find in this. And it's not a simple puzzle to, to work on. And you've worked on it a bit. How much have you worked on it, Stephen, dealing with the 15th year of Tiberius? Not very much, no. Yeah. I haven't really. <clears throat> I know I had a huge discussion on it for a few weeks on academia, but I can't remember. It'd take me a long time to find that discussion thread. Things are pretty hard to find, but I can't remember who the scholar was. Um, quite a famous scholar, and, and he was part of the discussion. And, and he, he's just very, you know, focused on trying to get Jesus crucified in 33 AD. So that was the thing that was uh, happening there. But um, any, any way you look at it, there's always going to be some pieces of the puzzle that are difficult 
to sort of put into place. Anybody else have any comments? I've just, um, if we were to add this here diagram to the other one there, you looked at beginning with Abraham leaving Haran. Yeah. So uh, Abraham leaves Haran in 1963 BC. Yeah. Uh, I just noticed there, so the, the end date then would be 1844. I just noticed that if you take 1963 minus 1844 is 119 years. Okay, so you're saying 1963 BC mm -hmm. minus 1844 AD, you get 11.9, which is November 9th. Yes. That's what you're saying. Okay. Just. Okay. Well, that's in, an interesting uh, observation. Yeah. Now, because um, one of the things that uh, we talked about, I can't remember when, but um, had to do with your November 9th, um, 19, 1849, adding 1844. Uh, to October 22nd, 1844, so 1,844 days. Um, so, so there's a number of ways in which these things are all connected um, that wouldn't, um, I mean, they, they just witness to, to all of the symbols that we have, even some of the very standard things that we understand as Adventists. Yeah, what I would look at with a diagram like this is I would ask people, well, is this valid? And I don't see how somebody couldn't accept it as valid. You, you know what I'm saying? If, you, if you're a Seventh-day Adventist and you accept this, and you would just say, well, this is just a coincidence, but there's so many things that are connected to this. They're um, all recognizable. Oh, no, just another Where? thing. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so we have here like weeks being mentioned. Yeah. So, um, so 10,000, sorry, 1,022 divided by seven. Okay. One four six. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's in ten thousand and twenty-two weeks. So sabbatical cycles divided by seven equals one four six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you see in the one four six? Well, Trump was born on the fourteenth of June. Okay. It's also half. Half of that is 73, um, mm -hmm. dealing with your 73 there, so. Okay. Yeah, so there's probably more things that we haven't seen. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So Dwight should be pretty close just, to getting yeah, to just a, yeah, yeah, just another thing. If you um, if you have if you take away from two thousand three hundred, uh, ten twenty-two. Yeah. You have the numbers kind of mixed up at July 18, 20, maybe? Okay, yeah. So you got the numbers from July 18, 20. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so 1278. Yeah, just in a completely different order. Yes. Instead of 1872, it's 1278. Mm -hmm. Hmm.
Yeah, and that's the thing is these numbers, you know, shouldn't just be doing this all the time. <laughs> but uh, that's the interesting thing about 187, you know, July 18, 2020, is it? it's one of these numbers that just connects in so many different ways. But we didn't choose the number because it connected. We, we didn't really choose the number. But, you know, it was noticed in Samuel Snow's letters and, and all different kinds of ways, the Lamex and, and et cetera. And we just keep finding more and more. So somebody looking at it now might just think we're kind of stretching things a bit, except that these numbers have been established for a long time. They're just little details we notice. They're not main arguments. Okay. Now, um, yeah, so it's 146 weeks. Hmm. Yeah, there's probably some more things we could find in this. Mm. Okay, if you check your email. Okay. So Theodore, Stephen, and Aran, take a look at your email. I sent a, a spreadsheet to you each. Yeah, so July 18 in history. Yes. Okay. Much, so of, this... much of this Stephen was already covering. Yeah, yeah. The... You know, send it to me. I ask Theodore Will. I'll send it to you, Mark. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to bring that up, Stephen, to look at it? Have you got it there? Can you do it? Um. Yeah, I can. Just stay on a sec. Um. Okay. Yeah, so this is going to be uh, 390 BC, the Roman Gaulish Wars, Battle of Alia. Alia. Yeah, it's just Roman army is defeated by raiding Gauls, leads to subsequent sacking of Rome. Then the Great Fire of Rome that begins under Emperor Nero, 1290 AD. Yep which is an interesting date, um, 1536 AD. So we get King Edward there, and then we got the Pope's authority declared void in England on July 18th. 1716, decree orders all Jews expelled from Brussels. 1814, British capture Prairie de Chien, Wisconsin. Now, some of these are significant, some are not. Of course, we know 1870 as a symbol of July 18th, and it's also July 18th during the First Vatican, Vatican Council, where Pope Pius XI uh, has officially proclaimed the concept of papal infallibility. Pius the Ninth. Ninth. What did I say? Eleventh. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm dyslexic when it comes to Roman numerals. <laughs> uh, and then the first human test of vaccine against cholera, that's going to be in July 18th, 1892. Adolf Hitler publishes Mein Kampf. On July 18th, 1925, uh, the Democratic Convention that nominates FDR for a third term is in 1940 on July 18th. Uh, Barack Hussein Obama published by Times Books in 1995, Dreams from My Father. And July 18, 2020, well, I mean, we had the Nashville prediction publicized on June 22nd. 21 and 22nd, but yeah. So, okay. And how does this relate then in specific ways to what Stephen was doing? Can you point out some things? Well, as you, as you noted, 1290 AD. Yeah. 
ordering the expulsions of Jews from England, and this edict would remain in place for 350 years. Okay. So that was going to remain in place till 1640. Okay. Now, the fact that in 1536 that the Pope's authority was declared void in England, and then we, you know, as we were addressing in 1870, the fact that Pius IX would publish this on, po on papal infallibility made it kind of interesting. Now, you've, you've referred several times in the past to Samuel Snow's letters, and I believe that July 18th was one of those dates, right? Yeah, yeah we would put that in there, the last of, the, of Snow's letters when it's published in 1844. Right. <clears throat> so there's many points throughout this that either involved Rome, Catholicism, or Jews. Okay. That all had to do with July 18th. Mm -hmm. I also found it interesting in 1864, prior to his reelection, that Lincoln asked for 500,000 volunteer troops for military service. On July 18th. Yes. Okay. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay. So, and anyway, any other thoughts before we close with prayer? None from me. Okay. Okay, Stephen, do you want to offer, offer prayer? Right, okay. Okay. Well, loving Heavenly Father, thanks uh, that we've looked at the events in history and seen uh, that you've been guiding these things and um, that there are structures within these here things for us to learn about. And we ask that you help us uh, with this here light, Father, as to how we are to use it and to guide the feet of ourselves and others into your path. And uh, we ask your blessing on those who are with us in this here study and those who will watch it in video later. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.